Hello, this is Crypto CJ. It's a trade of the day, Thursday night, Friday morning, Zoom edition, depending on where you are. The markets have gone mostly sideways and down a little bit. The good financial news we had yesterday, the CPI data that was positive, did not seem to move the needle for crypto. And there's some sort of FUD news out there uh the u.s government moved a bunch of bitcoin to coinbase but you know they're a custodian so you know chill out people anyway the <laughs> the uh, crypt nation guys went over this in some detail a couple hours ago so i'm not going to belabor it too much but the news wasn't sufficient enough to push the needle into the bullish positive direction so we're still mostly consolidating sideways between you know the, the the low to mid, well the mid to high 50s and the low 60s, a really tight range, about 10 to 15 percent on Bitcoin, and about the same on Ethereum. So uh, we'll go to the charts and check it out. I will share my screen, and should be seeing my Bitcoin day chart. Yep, we yep. up. All right, thank you. So as you can see, towards the end of the day, candles breaking through 60K a couple times, but not being able to hold it, and then dipping down, you know, 57.5 at the moment. So not loving that, unless you're looking to get in. On the Fibonacci retracement on the day chart, you know, we got, we, we bounced off the 0.5. That can, can be a good entry. Uh, we got the 0.618 down here in the low 50s and the 786 and the high 40s anywhere in here would be pretty good if you want to do a, a swing trade i did one of these um, a week or two ago put a stink bid at 50k pick that up when it dropped we got this drop and then wrote it up to 59 picked up 20 percent. so that was fun i've mentioned it twice so i should probably quit bragging about it but um anyway it's, it's kind of fun when the stink bids work out and pretty miserable when they don't so uh, use caution in that approach. So that's Bitcoin on the day chart. Ethereum, 2,500 seems to be holding. We bounced off it twice on the on the day chart and currently a little bit above it. But I'm longing for the uh, 3,000 range. That's where I uh, have a swing trade I'd like to get out of when it hits that. So... That's what's going on the markets overall. Anybody care to add something or ask a question? Okay, let's look at altcoin alert then and see if we can find some day trades and short term swing trades. So I'm on the altcoin alert site. I've got easy mode off. I've got the altcoin radar selected. That gives me all the columns, all the information. And then I'm going to look at this information, see what's moving or has the potential to move, then apply some technical analysis to that and get uh, get better entries. That's how I use altcoin alert. And that's how I've been talking about it for the past several years. So I think we have some new people on. Hope this uh, is helpful to you. The first sort I usually do is the AA score. Okay, I'm hearing some background noise. If you're not asking something, please mute yourself. Okay, I'm going to have to mute some people. Okay, everyone's muted. Go back to screen share. Okay, all coin alert and going to do a quick refresh, reload, and then I'll sort. Okay, so I'm looking for values 80 and higher, and we've had the usual suspects for the last three or four weeks, Jasmine, which is a coin I like to trade, and Pepe has been up here. I tend to avoid the the really uh, Pepe is a meme coin, but some of the you know kind of goofy ones like MAGA Trump and Dog on the Go and things like that. I don't trade like that. If you want to trade like that, 
that's that's your prerogative. There's nothing wrong with it. People make money on memes, but uh, it just hasn't been for me. BitTorrent is an old older project. I think we looked at that one last week. And Ondo is something that the guys like. So those are some of the options you may want to consider. Just below 80, we have Didix and Render. So if it goes a little bit below 80, I'll still look at those. I've got an alert. We've got alerts on Didic and Jasmine as I've had nearly every day for the last several weeks. And then Solana is here at 79.3. Uh, people are very interested in this one. So let's go ahead and look at Solana. We'll evaluate this as both a day trade and a swing trade. And I have different set of, different layouts for both. Okay, I'm going to go to Sol This is my list. You can make these yourself on TradingView. And Solana, this is the 15 minute chart. This is the layout that I use for my day trading. And I'll explain to you what the indicators are. Uh, apologies, this computer and internet connection loads a little slower than my, my last one, so. All right, so Solana on the 15 minute chart, I'm waiting for the supply and demand visible range, free Lux algo indicator to load that's showing me resistance and support on this time frame so you can see the red zone here you'll hear me use that term a lot is resistance it's up around 150 and then the green zone for support is around 138 and ideally we get into the green zone emerging is often the best place to to enter these trades for day trades and then for the alert or the uh, indicator that I use and I put alerts on is the RTI, the relative trend index. You may have heard of the RSI, the relative strength index. This is similar but different. And then I have this cumulative delta indicator for confirmation on trend based trades. I haven't been using this much lately because I've only been taking the dips and the pumps. So what I mean by that is get my vertical line. When something breaks below the 20 and then breaks back up, here's an example of that. That can be a good entry, no guarantees, but we have a break up here, but then eventually goes sideways. And that happens sometimes. So this does go against me about 2%. I would have made an, an additional purchase and then gotten out around here, probably with a small profit on my first position and then a larger profit on my second position. That approach is called ladder buying or dollar cost averaging. I do still believe we're overall in a bull market. So if you're trading, making spot trades like on Coinbase, this, this approach can be effective, but it's a little scary if you do something like this. All right. So here we have a break above the 20 on the RTI. And let's say you're holding out for this red zone. You want to get that that three and a half percent move. Well, it doesn't quite make it. You get a about a two and a half percent move, and then it does this. You know, makes about a three percent move, three and a half percent move against you. Again, I would have made at least one additional purchase in here, maybe two, and then I'd be up here. You know, the the overall position would be in profit. So I've got videos on how to do on how to evaluate ladder buying or dollar cost averaging. You may want to look those up. But overall, getting in on these dips below the 20 on spot trades can be can have some consistent success. Hold back a, a portion of your of your balance for additional purchases like I just described. And most of the time you'll be fine. If you most traders use stop losses. So you might want to look at Let's say you took that trade that I just talked about this one right here. You might want to look at this structure and put a, actually it would have looked a little different then. You may want to put a stop loss, you know, below the green zone. And then that may have kept you, and that keeps you safe if there's a large move ahead, you, you end up with a loss, but and actually that probably would have stopped out around here. So I don't like stop losses that much, but most traders use them and they are probably the, the best, most responsible way to go. 
but I still like my my ladder buys. So do with that information what you will. All right. So how do you? I mean, you don't want to stare at a chart all day. So so how do you do this? Um, what's the best way to approach? I was talking with a trading group earlier. I like my alerts. I become more selective in the alerts. I used to do six, then down to four, and now I'm at three, and I'm only doing these these dips and recoveries and then these pumps and breakdowns like we have over here. I would trade this as well. I'm an experienced day trader, so I'm trading on, on leverage on a foreign exchange, and so I can do shorts, and so I would have taken this short you know, um, Wednesday morning and picked up, you know, a couple percent. I would have gotten in right about here and picked that up. And for me on my day trading on this layout, I'm looking for a 1% to 1.5% move on the charts. And at 10x leverage, you know, that can that can do pretty well. Even on spot trades on Coinbase, you know, you can, you can pile up those wins and build your balance that way. The, on spot trades, though, I tend to go for bigger moves, 2 3 5%, depending on what the charts are showing me. But um, I digress. Let's uh, go back to the RTI. We're going to put an alert on this. Right-click on the RTI. And we're going to choose Add an Alert. And if you're trading on spot like most of you are, you want that dip below 20 in the recovery, we're going to do a crossing up on the 20. And I usually do these in the morning and I leave them on, you know, 10, 12 hours a day. So once per bar close, so I can get multiple trades. The alert name, uh, this is an, I did an AA score. So I'm going to select that one. Once you type in something a few times, trading view will remember it. On notifications, I'm notifying my app on my phone. I do about a quarter to a third of my trades off my phone. Um, show toast notification. That's a, a little window that shows up on your computer screen. Then play a sound also on your computer screen. And there's a few to choose from. So um, a more advanced alert is to trade both directions like I was describing earlier. So instead of crossing up or crossing down, I'm going to enter a channel. It's already got 20 on the bottom. So I've got 80 on top. And I'll go with Chirpy. I'm going to go ahead and take this alert and show you what it looks like. All right. So that alert will show up here in the alert section. That's the one I just set. And then you can see the rectangle here on the chart on the RTI. If you hover your cursor over it, it'll, it'll identify it for you. So, okay, so, CJ, I got a question for you. Okay, if that's okay. Sure. And and it, I was the one that was we were talking about the alerts mm -hmm. previously, um, and and my reluctance to use them. When do most of your alerts go off? Because for me, if they go off during the American market mainly, then I'm asleep at that time. Yeah, I'm... and that's that's why I think I don't like them very much because it, most of the action happens in the American market, which is the middle of the night. Yeah, that's that's true. And now that I'm in Asia, not that far from time zone wise from, from Craig, I think he's four hours ahead of me now. Uh, I've noticed that I get fewer alerts on Asian time. But I had yeah. four yes, I had four yesterday, four trades that I took, and probably. 10 alerts yesterday. So at least that day worked out. But earlier in the week, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, I only had one or two go off. So, you know, yeah. you're, you're right, but it's not necessarily a deal breaker in, in my opinion. I, no, I think you'll, no, you no, set, exactly, but yeah, you'll, you'll yeah, get more during I the U S hours, but yeah, but there's still some, you know, a lot of Asians, and, and people in Australia and, you know, Europe as well, trade crypto, they just don't generate quite the, uh, um, you know, the volume that the Americans do. And I used to think the Asians traded more than the Americans, but that's that's been uh, changed in the last couple of years. So despite our government's efforts to uh, <laughs> minimize that. 
Well, well it doesn't. They don't move the market in the same way. Mm -mm. They might trade more, but they don't. I don't know. Maybe the way they trade is different. Yeah. Yeah, and again, you know, nice thing about day trading is you don't need a big move. So, you know, one to one point five percent for me on a on an altcoin, that's very doable. Um, but if you're trading Bitcoin and Ethereum, not as much. But good point, Craig. Yeah, if you're in a different time zone, um, you know, the, the volume won't be as much. But most of my audience is, is in, in the U.S., so um, they should benefit from that that volume. Okay, any other tr questions on Solana as a day trade before we go over to the swing trade option? So let's do that. We're going to go over to my swing trade setup or layout. It's a little different than what you've seen. I still use the Lux Algo indicator for supply. It's called supply and demand visible range. I use it for support and resistance. You see the red zone, the green zone identified before. Um, I can also send you these layouts if you want. I can send. I can copy this link and send it to you. Then you can. It'll give you a copy, and you can copy it into your trading view if you want. Email me at cryptocj13 at gmail.com or reach out to me on one of the message apps and I'll I'll send that over if you want it. So you don't have to create this from, from scratch. Okay, so we're on Solana. I'm on the one hour chart now. You know, swing trade is a longer term trade, usually a couple of days, sometimes a couple of weeks. And at the moment, you know, it's got a good AA score and it's coming out of the green zone. We've got a buy signal on the super trend, which was what I used to help me um enter trades it's not great at entries but it's alert friendly and so i can look at some other indicators that are less alert friendly to evaluate trades at the moment um the sell did print after the buy and we've got the, finally this other indicator trendio lsma which is a, a moving average um, i want these to be all in in con congruence so a good example would be over here where the buy signal printed, the LSMA turned green, and we were emerging out of the out of the green zone. Though once the alerts trigger, triggered, it's pretty close to to the um, the red zone. Only about three percent move, you know, six percent at the very most. So I probably wouldn't would be less interest. I wouldn't have been that interested in that setup. This one looks a little bit better. If we get a green candle in the near future, say around this vicinity, you know, that's a 10% move. I usually want at least a 10% move, maybe well, sometimes 5% on my short term swings. And these are, these are trades I usually take on Coinbase. And again, I like to get that 10 to 20% move on my swing trades, but sometimes they take a few weeks. So if you want to set an alert on this, is this if this is more your speed than than the day trading I was talking about earlier, then you could use this layout. Right click on the super on the super trend, and just wait to catch the next, um, the next buy signal. You can if you want to trade both directions, you can leave it on direction change. I don't do this very often. I usually do make a decision. In this situation, it would be a buy signal. Um, AA score, and then I'm going to choose a different sound. I'm going to go with handbell, which I use for my swing trade alerts. Click create. And so when this alert goes off, oops, you know, that's the one right here. When it, when it goes off with a different sound, I'll, I'll, I will look at the charts again. I'm just going to blindly go in because an alert goes off see if everything else sets up. And if I like what I see, I'll go ahead and take that trade probably on Coinbase and try to ride it up to the red zone here between say 158, 163. So that's how I would approach this as a swing trade. Any questions on Solana as a swing? Okay, so I've gone, on, gone over this in some detail. I'll go through the others faster to uh, benefit some of my more senior members on this call. 
So let's go back to altcoin alert. No, that's not what I want. The, the uh, Zoom header got in my way. All right, so that was an AA score. Another sort that I like is the social activity sort. Do a quick refresh. And then we're going to match social activity sort. We're going to ma match that up with a trading activity. Looking for thumbs up or fire on both. And yeah, let's see what we get here. Polymath down 21% today. It's a falling knife. New cipher. I'm not seeing anything that I like at the moment. Ave has had a good run lately. Might look at that curve. Curve is one I've been trading a lot, but we looked at it last week. We haven't looked at Ave in a while. So let's look at Ave. And we'll get back over to the day trade layout as soon as it loads. Come on, Ave. Okay, there we go. We've got the candles back. RTI is loading. All right, there we go. So at the moment, we're bouncing off the red zone and breaking down on the 50 on the RTI. Now, when we had more of a pumping market, I was taking these trades when they broke above the 50 and then using the cumulative delta as, as confirmation. But... I just haven't felt confident with the market the way they, the way it's gone. The, the the rallies just haven't been strong enough. So I'm only taking dips now. We haven't had one on the RTI as far as I can see. Yeah, I don't know if that would have triggered my 20 alert or not. It's like a hit 21 and then bounce back up. That's where the 50 can be more useful. You know, here's an example of the 50. Oh, there it is. It's hiding. And there was a break here on the RTI, and it caught that big move. You can see, you know, eight. Uh, if you held, if you stayed in a long time, you know, twelve percent. That's a great um, day trade or short term swing. So with my more conservative approach lately, I would have missed that trade, but you know, that's that's the cost of doing business sometimes. So on this one, I would just go ahead and set the alert on breaking below the 20. You don't necessarily have to use the 20. You know, you could do say 25. We've had a couple near misses. Well, one near miss. So you could go crossing up on the 25 instead of the 20. Leave that on all day, and the rest is the same as you've seen, as, as I showed you on Solana. Your notifications, choose the one you want to use. Okay, so that's Ave as a day trade. If you got in in this vicinity, you know, there's about a three, two to three percent move to the red zone, which would suit my purposes. Again, if you're trading on spot, you may want to have a, a little bit bigger, bigger profit. All right, so that's the RTI day trading approach, short-term swing using this super trend. We're currently in the red zone now with a sell signal. So I would anticipate a dip down to this vicinity, somewhere in here, and then a recovery. So maybe your your buy signal, you know, hits around here. I'm really speculating here, which isn't very good. So this is a situation where if you really like this this coin, you want to trade it. You go to a larger time frame. 
Like I've been using the hour, but I can go to the four hour and see where the retracements are. See, the retracements are a little higher up here around 116. That was back um, earlier this month. So if you took this trade now, you've got about a 7% move to the red zone on the four hour chart between, uh, say, 7 and 9.5%. And, and then you can go out to the eight hour chart, see if uh, better retracements show up. They don't on the day chart. Yeah, you'd have to go back to to April to get a better retrace. You know, but that might take you know 100 days, 80, 90 days from here and here. I don't want to be in a swing trade, a short-term swing that long. Wouldn't be short-term anymore. So on Ave, I might go with the, the four hour information, try to catch the next uh, dip, and then take uh, get this out, get out of here on eight or nine percent profit. Not ideal, but not bad. Plus if I if, if Ave dips or goes sideways and I make a couple additional purchases, it's it's a coin I probably wouldn't mind owning for a while and have a short-term swing turn into an unintentional long-term swing. That happens sometimes. Unless you set a stop loss or you just decide to get out and reallocate those assets assets differently. Any questions on Ave? Okay. So that was a social activity sort. And then I also like the long-term sentiment sort. Do a quick reload. Then with long-term sentiment, that's what people are talking about on Twitter, on social media. We're going to match that up with the Elder Impulse, which is a indicator that the Bryce likes, the Crypt Nation person, the guys who came up with this um, this approach. And then I'm going to match up very bullish or bullish on both columns and see if anything comes up. Zen. Something I trade from time to time. OGN, that's a that's an older one. I traded that a lot in 2020. INJ I like. Dash is an older project. Ave we just talked about. And then Zcash, another older project, but up today. So let's go with INJ. I think we'll look at that one. Okay. I do believe all or most of the coins I'm showing you are on Coinbase. Come on, you can load. Let's go. There we go. Well, maybe not. <laughs> okay. Everything's here. And INJ is coming out of the green zone. This just broke above the 20 on the RTI. I like that. So, I mean, you could, not financial advice, but you could take this now. I mean, it's broken above here a couple of times. And you've got, you know, almost 7% to the red zone. And this kind of middle area here where I see resistance, you know, 3.5%, that's a good day trade. So I try to look at that and take that one myself. See if that one's on my, on my list. It's not, bummer. So this was, I don't know if this one's on Coinbase or not. So it is, so you could take it there if you want. And again, breaking out of the 20 at this moment, everything looks good. So yeah, it's uh, kind of fun when I do this and the trade actually forms right in front of us. So any questions on INJ? 
as a day trade. Okay, let's look at this as a swing. Okay, we're pretty close to the red zone already on the one hour chart. Currently in a cell, LSMA is against us on the longer term, 6%. So on this one, let's look at the four hour. All right, quite a bit of room to move. In late July, it was over $25. So that's going to be a really nice recovery if you catch that. Yeah, wow. You know, 40%. In 21 days, 2% a day. Love it. So on this one, I think it's just the try to catch the next buy on the super trend. Right click on that, choose the buy. And just once, then this was a long term sentiment sort. Yeah. And then I would go with hand bell on that one. Okay, my NJ looks better as a day trade than a swing trade. Any questions on that? Okay, well, my Zoom calls earlier than it used to be. I used to do a, a short for the weekend. I'm still going to do one. So it's a Thursday night short for the weekend. Let's go to Allcoin Alert. I'm going to reverse sort the long term sentiment, look for something that's bearish. Wow, Quant's taking a beating. I haven't looked at this one in a while. This used to be over $100 forever. Luna. Uh, BNT. I'm looking at these. Filecoin. I was trading that one last week. Did pretty well with it. One inch. Audio. Storm. STMX. EGLD. ICP. These are all... You know, if you can get access... If you want to trade leverage and you want to trade shorts and get access to a foreign exchange, you know, all these setups look pretty good to investigate further. Doge, I love shorting Doge. So which one should we look at? Let's look at Filecoin. I, like I said, I, I had some trades with that one last week that worked out pretty well. And just because I'm, I've sorted this, I will still consider a long if I see what I like on the chart. So... I'm going to head over to Filecoin on my list. Look at the day trading option first. And thank you for your patience while this is loading. Okay, Filecoin looks a lot like INJ. And we've had a break above the 20. And it did a nice dip. Trending up. Everything trending up. Quick look at Bitcoin. Um, go over to the 15-minute chart. And it was trending up. Now it's hooking down. Well, we just printed a green, green candle, so... I know this one's one I can take. So not financial advice, but I'm going to take a long on this. And practice what I preach. All right, so I'm in on Filecoin. I'm looking for a 1 to 1 to 0.5% profit. I've got this sort of automated with a software company I'm working with. I hope to introduce this in the near future, but I've been talking about it for a year. So we'll see. But to the red zone from where we are now is four and a half percent to the bot to the SMA line, just under 1%. And then this resistance I'm seeing here at about 3%. So I think any of those, depending on your risk tolerance, would be reasonable exits, take profits on this, this setup. If you want to use a stop loss, I'd suggest putting that down here, say around 340 below the, the green zone, 
Um, and then if you're going to make additional purchases on spot, I would probably go do that around two to five percent, and then catch that uh, that retrace. Any questions on Filecoin? Is this day trade? All right, we'll take a look at this as a swing, and then we'll probably wrap this up. So it looks pretty good as a swing as well. We're coming out of the green zone. And we, though we don't have confirmation yet on either the super trend or the LSMA, those are strong hourly candles. Yeah, I'd be tempted to take this now. Because you're going to get a better entry. 8% to the red zone. Pretty good swing. Pretty good swing trade. But if you want to be a little more cautious, right click on the super trend, wait till you get that buy signal. That's not right. Yeah, collect that or uh, click that super trend alert buy. That was a long term sentiment sort. And then handbell or whatever you want to choose for your, your alert on that. And that'll probably print right about here. And, you know, 7.5%, that's not bad. If you want to go stay in longer, look at your four-hour chart. Yeah, I've got options, retrace options going in, in late July to, to over 460. So now you're looking at 30%, you know, 35% into the all the way into the red zone on a long. Now, if you want to go short on this, and like just because I did a short base sort doesn't mean I'm going to trade it that way. You, if you got in now on a short, yeah, you got 15% down to the green zone. So that, that's not bad. This is where your candle action kind of contradicts what the indicators are doing. Usually candle action rules because candle action is, this is what's going on now where indicators are essentially using math equations to reach conclusions from the past. So uh, if you took a sell on this, maybe a stop loss up here around $4. If you want to use the stop loss option or do maybe one or two additional purchases like that goes up to the red zone. Um, can be a little dangerous if you believe we're in a bull. If, we're in a, if we are actually in a bull market, because you can get uh, crushed on shorts if something spikes up. Okay, any questions on file as a long or a short? Sorry, I was a little scattered on that. I saw the, the setup on the uh, the day trading chart and liked it a lot. So kind of went back into long mode. Okay, any questions about day trading, swing trading, all coin alert, the markets overall, any coins you want to look at? Okay, well, I'll wrap it up here then. If you're watching on the recording, I'd rather see you live. For those of you who made it live, I appreciate you finding me on uh, on Thursday night. I had to make a change to my my agenda when I did this uh, digital nomad thing in Asia. So appreciate you finding me. And uh, if you're watching on the recording, check out the opportunities in the pinned comment. They help support the channel. You guys have a good weekend. We'll see you Monday night. Bye-bye. CJ, you got a minute?